Okay, I was going to have Sister Cruz. It was about 40 years ago that I had oh, Sister Cruz. I hadn't been saved for just a few months. Not too long. I got to thinking about Sister Cruz was probably in her 40s whenever I met her. She was 82 when she left this world. And I look at her physical character and it changed a lot. She went from a robust woman down to just a frail little lady before she passed away. But I have to say this before I go any farther. I saw no change whatsoever in what was on the inside of that lady. She was the same the day I met her with her standards for the Lord as she was the other night whenever she stepped out and stepped in the court. Amen. I, I just felt like I had to say that. Brother Adam has asked us to have church. And that's the only thing I know to do. And I'm not here to put on a show. I'm not here to be seen. I'm not here to be heard. I'm here to the Lord. And I wouldn't dare try to give the scripture to you or comment on the scripture without first I ask for his anointing because I'm nothing. But he's everything. And I won't preach at our church without you. I ask God's help. So I'm going to do the same here if you're without it with me. I need mean, the portion of this book. Father, I come to you thank you. Me. First, Lord, for the privilege of having known Sister Cruz for the years that I've known her. I thank you, Lord God, for your saving grace, for your mercy. Lord, I ask you to look down this morning. Now, Lord, us, Lord, that we might speak this word that you made upon our heart, that God could bring to our remembrance all that you've spoken to us, in order that we might be able to just bring forth this word in such a manner that it would touch of our life. Those loved ones, I pray God that you let the Holy Ghost to see them, that you would let him give them the comfort that is needed in his hand. Father, the Lord said, I serve in you, Lord God, and feel with your spirit. I pray, Lord, that you would let them feel the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost this morning with his comfort as he comes on the scene. I ask God that there's one here this morning that doesn't know you. And God, you would let the words that we would speak come with conviction. Lord, that the Holy Ghost would speak to their hearts. And Father, they would see the need this morning to make things right. I ask now that have an anointing that only you could see. And I praise you, Master, for it in advance. I thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. I read the scriptures this morning. Yesterday, all day, it was on my mind, the 23rd Psalm. I came in this morning, they handed me the brochure, and it's got the 23rd Psalm in right there, in that little brochure that they handed you when you came in. And it reads like this it says, A Psalm of David. He says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall. Want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will hear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to just take part of that first verse. Amen. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I thank God that I know this morning that Sister Cruz is in a better place than what you and I are this morning. You know why? She made Jesus her shepherd. She followed him, she obeyed him, she served him. And he's blessed her to this point. Amen. And she's not no longer in our presence, but she's in the presence of the Lord. And that's the promise he made. And that last part says that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. As I begin to think about this, I begin to think about what Jesus has said. You know, we sometimes want to know what's going to take place later and what's the results of serving the Lord, what's the results of not serving the Lord. I began to think about it. I went over to John chapter 10. And in the 14th verse, he says, I am the good shepherd, and my sheep, and, and know my sheep, and am known of my sheep. Amen. He knows you and I. He knows everything there is to know about us. And I thank God this morning that I know him. If you don't know him, you can before this day is over. Amen. 
He said, As the Father knoweth me, even so, no one has a Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus gave his life for every one of us that will hear his voice and will follow him. Amen. Verse 16 says, And other sheep have I. You and I are the only ones. Amen. My mind went over to what Peter said on the day of Pentecost when he was talking about the promise of the Holy Ghost and talking about salvation. And he said, it's not just for you, but it's for you and it's for your children and for those that are far off, as many as the Lord thy God is called. And those that will hear His voice. Amen. When He's called. So he said he had sheep of other fold. He had sheep then. He's had sheep in between now and then. Amen. And thank God I can be one of them today and I am one of them. And I thank God for it. But I got to thinking on the shepherd. And you know, a shepherd would try to have a good, healthy flock. He does his best to increase his flock. He does his best to have a healthy flock to where there's no blemishes in that flock so that it will continue to produce greater sheep. Amen. Well, that's the way Jesus has been trying to work on us since the very beginning of the time that He stepped out of that tomb, fulfilled that promise, fulfilled that promise that He made to us. He's been trying to increase that sheepfold, and He's trying to make it better. Amen. Every day as you and I live for Him, praise the Lord. Man. But listen to what He says. He says, "And other sheep have I which are not of this fold, that them also I must bring, that they shall hear my voice." And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. He said he's got others. He said there's still some that need to hear his voice. And when they hear his voice, he's going to make it all one fold. Amen. There's not going to be some Pentecostals over here and some Baptists over here and some Methodists over here. We're going to all be one fold. And there's not going to be those from back in the 1800s over here and those in the and you know the 1920s and the 40s over here. And then we're going to change over from the 40s to the 60s over here. Then we're going to go from the 70s, amen, over to the 90s here. And then we're going to have a group over here that's going to be from the 90s on up to 2012. It's not going to be like that. They're going to all be one fold. You know why? Because they all heard His voice and obeyed Him. Praise the Lord. So He says there's going to be one, one fold and one shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd. Praise God for heaven. And then He goes on to say in Matthew 8 and 11, it says, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. That tells me that we're going to all gather together. All of those that have heard His voice and made Him their shepherd. Without He's your shepherd, you're not going to make it in. Amen. And, and I began to read on down and I got to thinking about in Matthew 22 and 32, He says, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He said, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when I read that, amen, I couldn't help but think. He said, I'm the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Isaac, I'm the God of Jacob, and I couldn't help but see Ben Cruz go wrong in that, amen. Yeah. That he's the God of all of those Thank that you. have heard his voice, followed him, made him their shepherd. Praise God for that. I, I, I just got a little excited about it, amen. Thank you. And you know, if, if I can just keep the blood applied and keep hearing his voice, amen, and not let a stranger come in, I can have my name put right in there. He's the God of Abraham. And he's the God of Isaac. And he's God of Jacob. And he's God of Betty Cruz. And he's God of Bill Haddon. And if you'll hear his voice this morning and follow him, you can have your name added right into oh, that list yes, yes. because he's the God of the living. That tells me that Abraham. Isaac and Jacob and the prophets have not died. Amen. They're just asleep in Jesus. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. That's some church to shout about right there. The yeah. thing that I've got life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to leave this body but I'm not going to die. I'm going to be with Jesus. And that shout oh, around right there. Jesus. Praise the Lord better. And, and then I, I got to thinking about where he said over in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13 he said, Behold, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Amen. Now, he didn't say those that are dead, did he? He said those that are asleep. I've always
already said, I believe a Christian dies different than what a sinner does. Amen. Amen. I believe that with all that's within me. A Christian dies because you see, we know that whenever we leave this body, Paul said to be absent in the body was to be present with the Lord. Amen. So when I leave this body, I'm going to be in His presence. I know I'm going to have a new body because you see, when I feel the presence of the Lord here, it just it's all this body can do to have it. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and we've never seen him in person. We've just felt him. So whenever we see him in person, brother, this old body couldn't stand it. And I couldn't help but think about how that Moses, when he just saw the hand of part of God, amen, he come down and his face was a glow. There's something about meeting Jesus and making him the shepherd of your life that changes your countenance. It changes your attitude about things. It makes a change in your life. Amen. If he's your shepherd, and here's the good part. Amen. I can still hear his voice. Praise the Lord. He brought his voice. It's what brought me out of sin unto repentance. Amen. It's what sanctified me. Glory to God. It's what filled me with the Holy Ghost. And it's what keeps me going. Whenever the enemy comes in like a flood, I hear this still small voice saying, Just follow me. I've got it under control. You don't have to worry. Everything's under control. Amen. Uh, uh, so he said he don't want us to be eager. He wants us to know what to look forward to. Now listen to what it says in verse 14. It says, So for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him? He's coming back. Hallelujah. But it said, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, I don't believe that. I know so. Amen. You know how I know? He made a change in my life. The things I couldn't handle, the things I could not change, brother, when I surrendered my life to Him began to listen to His voice, He made a change in my life. Amen. Things that I tried to change and could. The presence and the power of that shepherd speaking to my heart, amen, and encouraged me, helped me to make the change. Praise the Lord forever. But if he's going to come back, and when he comes back, guess who's coming with him? Hallelujah. I get excited, son. I get to thinking, and I get to thinking about Jesus coming back, and that's going to be enough in itself to excite you. Hallelujah. But then I get to thinking about some of those that's going on. When I get to thinking about Brother Ward Oldberry and I, Sister Don Oldberry and old Brother Oswald Medford. And I get to thinking about Polly Thickpin. Amen. And, 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 and I get to thinking about Betty Cruz. And, and church, I'm going to tell you what, it's all I can do to stand still. When I get to thinking about that Eastern Sky Blessing Open, I get to thinking about Brother Oldberry and Sister Don Oldberry. And I get to thinking about that Eastern Sky Blessing Open and the, the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings stepping out there. Oh, Here he yeah. comes and hears all of those. That was an inspiration. To me, all oh, that helped me to hold on to make it to where I'm at today, and they're coming back oh, with me. They're not dead, they're alive. Oh, and yes. They're in a better place than you and I are. We're struggling to get there. And thank God, Sister Cruz's battle's over. Amen. And we can look forward to meeting her again if we have the same shepherd she has. Amen. That's the whole secret to the thing. He says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain in the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, prevent them which are asleep. Amen. For the Lord Himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise for us. Now, I, I couldn't help but think when He said, We can't prevent those that are asleep. I thought about whenever he was talking to the disciples and, and he said, Lazarus is sick, amen. We need to go over to Lazarus. But he kept uh, messing around for four days, didn't get no hurry, didn't get all excited, amen. Sometimes I think we get too excited about what's happening around us uh, because we don't realize who our shepherd is, amen. Uh, uh, but he, uh, whenever he got to talking to them and, and, and he finally said, Lazarus is dead, because I said, well, if he's asleep, he said, you know, he'll, he'll get better. Sleep is doing good. But he said he's not asleep. Lazarus is dead. Uh, amen. What is Jesus saying? He's saying to me, amen, that whenever Lazarus died, he had died to 
of the flesh, but he was still alive to the Lord. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. This old flesh is going back to the, to the dust from whence it came, but this soul and your soul, amen, is going to live throughout eternity, and it's going to depend who your shepherd is as to where your soul will spend eternity. Amen. I, I, I couldn't help but think when Jesus said, Lazarus is dead. Well, they sort of give up hope. Uh, Brother Adam, don't give up hope, son. Uh, she's just asleep in Jesus. Uh, this old house, amen, that, that she was living in, it deteriorated. Uh, amen. It, it, it got worn down. It, 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 it got to where it needed to be repaired. And, and it wasn't able to repair itself. Baby, come on now. Uh, amen. But the Lord said it's enough. Amen. Uh, I've got a better place for you. Are you listening to me? The best is yet to come. Amen. Uh, Glory to God if we'll keep hearing the voice of the shepherd. Hallelujah. I look into this thing and I got to think it. And some's got the idea he's just going to slip in, amen, and he's going to speak a few out. I can't buy that doctrine, brother. I'm sorry, but it said he's coming back with the sound of the trumpet and the shout of the archangel. I don't believe Jesus ever did anything in secret, and he's not about to start now, amen. But praise the Lord, he's well able, and he'll stand by those that will hear his voice. That's the whole secret, hearing his voice. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it said that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to God. There's an enemy I've got to fight here. There's a voice. He's wanting to try to pull me and lead me astray. He wants me to begin to doubt. He wants me to get to looking at circumstances and conditions around me and say, well, what's the benefit in serving the Lord? Well, you know what the benefit is? I've got joy here. I've got peace here. It don't matter what comes against me. I know that my shepherd's taking care of me. I know he's got the situation with the control, and I know that after a while, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Yes, this is what he goes on to say. He says, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. There's comfort this morning in knowing that this sister is asleep in the Lord. There's comfort this morning in knowing that this sister is going to come back with Jesus when He comes and there's going to be a reunion. Praise the oh, Lord. Yes, yes. I'm here to tell you, I don't know about you. I, I miss my sister and I know there will be nights that I'll miss her and I know I'll look out of that congregation and there will be an empty spot over there by Brother Cruz and, and it's going to hit a place in my soul and my heart. Amen. Uh, but Brother, I'm thrilled this morning to know that my sister has listened to her shepherd and she's made it home to glory. And that gives me comfort this morning. Now let me tell you, he said comfort one another with these words. If you don't know the same shepherd she knows, there's no comfort for you this morning. And as the brother said, we don't have to say goodbye. I can just say so long. I'm going to see her again after a while. But if you don't know him, you have said your last uh, goodbye. She'll never meet with you again unless you have the same shepherd that she had. Amen. Glory to God. And listen to what he said in, in John 10 and 27. He said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Amen. The sheep hear his voice. Did you know something? Those that aren't his sheep hear too. Come on. Those that are serving the Lord, made Him the shepherd of their life. Uh, uh, brother, they hear His voice and they follow Him. But those that aren't His sheep, they're hearing His voice. They know they need to make a change. You've heard the call of God. God's dealt with your heart. You've heard that voice. And, and you know you need to make things right. Amen. But I've got news for you. Unless you surrender to that voice and you're led of that voice and you do what He's speaking to you, then you are lost and will never enter into the kingdom of God. Oh, preacher. Uh, you said have hey, church in you, brother. Amen. I'm just preaching like I would preach a corn song. 
Amen. If I can't preach it at my church while I'm preaching here, I got no business preaching at my church. Amen. All right, I say my church is God's church. It's the place where we pastor. Amen. Now listen, in Revelation 3 and 20, he says this. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him and will sup with him and he with me. Amen. Now, when you hear the voice of the Lord trying to correct you, now let me say this. He reserved a spot in every one of us that He can speak to. Sin or sin, He can speak. It's called your conscience. Whenever you do something and you feel condemned over it, that's the shepherd speaking to you to correct things. Huh? Come on, church. Yes. I'm trying to preach you the truth this morning. I'm trying to stir you up, make you realize there is going to come a separation after a while. Those that are his sheep are going to be put on his right hand. Those that aren't are going to be put on the left hand considered to be goats. Amen. But he says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. This morning, if you hear him knocking at your heart's door, be a good time to just open that heart store Amen. and let them come in. There's a song that the Wimberleys used to sing called the King of Glory. Amen. I'm talking to you this morning about that King of Glory. I'm talking about you where our hope's at. I'm talking about you where our comfort's at. Brother Adam, you can rest comfort this morning. If you hear the voice of that shepherd, the same shepherd she had, son, after a while there's going to be a reunion. Glory to God. There's going to be a shouting time. Hallelujah. I don't believe in shouting, but I guarantee you'll shout on that get up morning. Amen. 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 You'll shout on that get up morning. I tell you what, I, I don't believe anybody can come in contact with the Lord without first they break down and the tears roll. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. They say, well, if I got saved and they had a pizza bubble gum in their mouth and a chewing their bubble, no, 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 you didn't meet the Jesus I'm here. Amen. Whenever I met him, there was a weep and praise the Lord. And I believe when you step in some folks say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I believe the first thing you're going to do when you step through those gates is you're going to fall down and you're going to begin to weep before him. And you know what? That's one of the last tears you'll ever see. Because he said, God himself is going to wipe the tears from my eyes. Oh, I'm going to do that. And all I believe when I see him, when I met him, I wept in an altar of repentance. Amen. Heaven now and again now, I feel the presence of the Lord. And I can't hold it back. The tears begin to flow. Amen. And I know when I meet Him, that's what's going to happen. Just to see His glory. Amen. Have you made Him the shepherd of your life this morning? Have you ever heard Him knocking at your heart's door? Have you opened your heart to Him and allowed Him to come into your heart that you know that He's your shepherd? I feel comfort this morning because I know one day I'm going to meet my sister again. Amen. One day I'm going to meet her again. There won't be no heartache. There won't be no sorrow. There won't be no pain. Can you imagine a place where there's no enemy to come against us? She's there. She's there. Brother Adam, we have that opportunity to go if we make Jesus the shepherd of our life. Amen. If we make Jesus the shepherd I believe the Lord speaks to some hearts this morning as He speaks you will be.